uh, AOC has started a PAC. And um, it is a PAC specifically to support progressives, whether they are incumbents in Congress or whether they are challenging. She has been one of the biggest fundraisers, I, I would say probably as a freshman, probably the biggest freshman fundraiser in the history of Congress. Even without those qualifications, she has been a juggernaut of fundraising, which is, right, which I, I raise because, A, it is supposedly the metric in which people gain importance in Congress and respect, we've been told in the past. But B, it's also hugely important because if people recall back in an earlier time on this program where we weren't dealing with this um, crap show that we have, we would talk about the dynamic between a Steny Hoyer and other progressives. And progressives, I should say, not other progressives. And Steny Hoyer became the whip, and now he's number two in the Democratic caucus, he's the, the uh, House Majority Leader, because he came from a corporate seat that allowed him to raise a lot of money from corporations easily. And so he could go around the country and help fundraise and give money to other Democratic Congress people. And he would build favors that way. And that's the way that they would build coalitions. Steny, I owe my seat to Steny. I'm going to give him this vote on this. And that's why he was the whip. And I compared it to like, you know, like a guy like, I don't know, Jim McGovern from Worcester, who is a... Um, a very strong progressive of, you know, back in the days where, you know, that was that was as, as, as good as you could hope for. And Jim McGovern does not come from a, a, a he does not going to take a bunch of corporate donations. If he wanted to go around and be the whip, he couldn't do it because he doesn't have the ability to raise money for what he needs and for what other people need. So AOC is a has power. She has power both in her public image and in her ability to fundraise and in her ability to give $300,000 to other Democrats running. That's a lot of money. But what she has not done is paid dues to the DCCC because she doesn't like the way they distribute the money. She wants to be able to have control over how she delegates out this power. Now, I'll tell you somebody else who does that. Dan Lipinski. He's a congressman from Illinois, but he does it because he doesn't want his money to go and support people who are pro-choice. He is a sitting Democratic congressman who does not pay his dues to the Democratic Party because he doesn't want to fund pro-choice Democrats. Well, I've got news for you. They're virtually all pro-choice. Here's another fact. Cheryl Bustros the chair of the DCCC has said, if you challenge Dan Lipinski and you work for a challenger of Dan Lipinski, you are on a blacklist. You are blacklisted. We will never hire you. The DCCC will never hire you. So just keep all this in mind when she is asked a very tame question. Is she helpful to the caucus? This is Cheryl Bustros on CNN. This is this is what happens. This is AOC is taking the power. And this is them fighting that. This is why this is important. Let's uh, see dues. Is she good for the Democratic caucus in the House? Nope. Look, she has a lot of followers. I have respect for her. She brings um, a new voice to Congress. I, that, that's a, and, that's a, and I'm low on time. Is she good for the caucus? <laughs> You know, look, we, we've got all members from all different spectrums. Um, I, I respect her, and uh, she brings spectrums? a new voice, and, and I, I think that's always welcome. It's interesting. I have the, the chairwoman of the DCCC, whose job it is to support incumbents, and, and Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez is one. And I'm asking you just a straightforward question. Is she good for the Democratic caucus in the House? We, look, she, she, she brings a voice. Um, we, we have members from um, all different spectrums of, of, the, of the Democratic Party. Look, I come from a district that Donald Trump won. Um, my, my politics are, are uh, somewhat different. 
than hers, but she brings a voice that's welcome, she, and and and, I'll, and, and, and um, I have great I have great appreciation. She for raised that. more money in the third quarter of 2019 than any other Democrat in the House, including the Speaker of the House. She's given, as she counts, three hundred thousand dollars to other incumbents, including some in swing districts. And I'm asking the chairwoman of the DCCC if this member, who's at right now in the top ten of House members raising money, if she's good for the caucus. Wait, you wait, can't what? give me a straight yes or no. <laughs> Yeah, look, I, I have respect for um, all, all 235 of the Democrats. So um, if you had any question as where the battle lines are within the context of the Democratic Party. And um, I mean, that's there it is. I mean, that's why, you know, frankly, that's why if you're in California, 25th district, and you have the opportunity to. Uh, to elect uh, Cenk Uger, that's why you do it. I want to know who gets mad if she says, yes, she's good for well, the Well, that's caucus. the amazing thing about it. Like, what do they think the liability is? Look, they've done polling that shows that AOC is far more popular. She's not necessarily hugely popular in swing districts, but far more popular in swing districts than Nancy Pelosi. And... Like oh. what, 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 what Republican is going to run on Cheryl Bustos said that, uh, she thinks that AOC is good for the party. Well, maybe they came to their senses and decided to stop throwing Pelosi style shade at her. I think this is, there are Democrats who are mad at AOC because that she makes their life more difficult because they are held to a higher standard. There's greater expectations of them. That means that they've got to go out and do more fundraising and fight off a uh, progressive challenger. Look, there are progressive challengers all across the country. And um, I keep uh, threatening to do this, but I, I, I've interviewed about a, over a dozen of them now on um, Ring of Fire. And I'm going to put you know, a couple of them together and we'll, we'll put it out as a podcast soon, but uh, you should be supporting these people. Challenges are, I used to think that you would want to um, uh, be specific about where you do your, your, your challenges, you know, don't waste your money against a, uh, a, a you know, a, a already somewhat progressive, um, uh, you know, Democrat when you could spend your money somewhere else. But I don't think it works that way anymore. And I think the benefits that you get from challenging all Democrats. If someone wants to challenge AOC, I mean, and let me, let me, let me put a qualifier. Low, do, low dollar donor, non-corporate Democrats. I think, you know, as long as the primary challenger is coming from that direction, I'm talking in terms of progressives in terms of challenging, I'm talking in terms of non-corporate. I think that's a very healthy thing for progressives and for the left, broadly speaking. Obviously, I don't want AOC uh, challenged by uh, somebody who's getting financed by Amazon because they're pissed that they didn't get their uh, their you know big chunk of cash. But that's and they are pissed. I, I, I don't blame them. Good, get more pissed. <laughs> 